Day live from Green Brilliant Studios, Herndon, Green Brilliant Studios. Today we'll be discussing the Inflation Reduction Act and its impact on homeowners, business owners, and especially nonprofits with Alex Craigie, Director of Sunstone Credit. Alex, introduce yourself. Hey Adam, thanks so much for having me on. Um, delighted to be here. I work with Sunstone Credit. We uh, finance uh, small and mid-sized commercial solar projects, um, work with a lot of small businesses. So much for having me. Uh, it's such a treat to be on your, your show. And um, I am uh, 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 work with Sunstone Credit, like you said. Um, we're a commercial solar financing company. We specialize in small and mid-sized commercial solar projects. Um, I have a background in green banking. So green banking is uh, sort of a, a, a term of art. Um, these are uh, entities that are uh, created by um, generally by uh, state and local governments and either created or supported by state and local governments. So this is like the difference between a private bank. Yeah. Okay. Correct. Okay. Correct. And uh, capitalized with funds, whether it's usually public money um, and sometimes philanthropic funds. And the goal is to fill gaps in clean energy financing markets if you're a green bank. So if someone did a clean energy project that they're can't get a load for mm. it's a green bank's job to either uh ideally you know coax the private sector lenders into this space um and I like that word coax yeah coax. What, what, yeah what, what is the process of coax coaxing a private lender to like uh, i'm assuming help you fund the project yeah, like the well, to, to, yeah to exactly yes it's it's to, to make projects that would not be otherwise funded uh get financing um you can use things like uh uh uh, uh, uh credit enhancements to sort of de-risk the, the project for the private sector lender. Um, you can use partnerships that allow the private sector's lender to um, uh, really uh, shine and, and uh, get the spotlight they deserve for mm -hmm. doing the kind of work they're doing. But at the end of the day, the goal is, hey, if there's a clean energy project out there, we believe you there should be financing available for the end user to uh, to access it because, you know, frankly, we, we um, at this point, uh, hundreds of billions and uh, even trillions of long-term of investments. Um, and there's just not enough government money out there to do it by itself. So Green Bank's job is to kind of pull the private sector off the sidelines in these markets and, and uh, let's go get them to get, get this going. Yeah, let's get like, money. Let's work together. Let's get the markets. Uh, so you're not necessarily a rival. You're not a gift. Oh, no. Right? We're not like bank versus bank rate. No. It's coming off next month. But this is... <laughs> No, no. For uh, Green Bank's job is, uh, you know, the last thing you want to do is is compete with private capital. Um, Green Bank's job is to be there and serve areas that uh, um, haven't, uh, that I don't have that uh, service by the private sector. You know, when we got started in 2011, you referenced how I was part of the team that uh, created the Connecticut Green Bank, mm -hmm. which was the country's first. And um, the country's first, like let's say that a little, a little, a little bigger, right? And we're the country's first, first and, and yeah, it's, it's still Alex Craig, he was part of this, and right? I, uh, part of the team, yeah, absolutely. And um, it's still going real strong. Um, but the, the back then, you know, it was uh, it was hard to get financing even for a large scale utility scale solar projects. Um, and uh, uh, that's just not the case anymore. So, what green banks now tend to focus on is serving disadvantaged communities. Uh, those are the folks who traditionally get left behind in a sort of technological um, uh, rollouts uh, tech, uh, uh, in advance um, and making sure that, uh, you know, everybody uh, uh, in, in the country had access to the cost saving and environmentally friendly benefits of, of uh, clean energy. So when we when we first spoke, this is maybe about a month, month and a half ago, I, I think you you had your you had your son. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. This delayed the show, but we're okay with that. <laughs> How's Connor doing? Connor's doing great. He's uh, he's in daycare. And he's you know we just started in daycare, and um, our, our big fear, I think uh, everybody's big fear is he's going to be crying the whole time and separation anxiety. Man, all I see is when I when I drop him off, I just see his little rock crawling away from me. Uh, you know, going to play with the toy and see his friends. So he's. He's happy as a clam. Uh, he's he's good. <laughs> so yeah, you know, it, it, when we last spoke, you know, that was honestly the highlight of my hour uh, or the we. Okay, you know, my son Logan, I love him to death, and turned four, so we actually could delay a little bit. But the one thing, because you 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 mentioned billions, okay, 
uh, that I keep going back to and I referenced in my head, but I didn't really, I didn't really ask the Inflation Reduction Act. Okay. Are we talking like 369 billion set aside? Maybe I pulled that number from Google. I'm not sure. Uh, the, the bottom line is, okay, those are, that's a, that's a large number. And you, you can validate that for me. Will you validate that for me? Yeah, I'd happily validate that for you. It's, uh, uh, uh to, to, I believe the largest, uh, uh, investment package ever passed by, um, uh, any sort of government body, uh, in human history. Um, it's a, it's a really, really big deal. So in this economy, when Dasani 24 pack is literally $8.25 on sale, I'm right now going, are you a mystical unicorn? Is the Inflation Reduction Act a mystical unicorn? Is this just, is it, is it real? And that's what I, that's, I, I really want to, I want to focus on that. And I, I want to digest, dive deep on the Inflation Reduction Act before, keyword before, homeowners, business owners, and nonprofits decide to go solar. And then kind of relate, you know, really what this means to all of them. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. No, I'm, uh, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a sea change for everybody. It's, first of all, it's, it's um, uh, most importantly, you know, it's, it's uh, predictability for, it gives a runway for 10 years. Yeah, because uh, nobody knows what's going on. I mean, everybody's yeah. saying 30%, 30%, 30%. Is it 30%? Like, <laughs> yeah, you know, the big financial incentive, whether you're a homeowner or <laughs> business for going solar is, is the investment tax credit. And uh, that's, you know, you get 30%. Of the project um, uh, to use against any tax liability. So let's let's bring this to a solar project. Let, let's start very small with the homeowner. Okay, okay. In the average cost of a solar project is around twenty to twenty five thousand dollars nowadays. Okay, so let's use an easy number. Let's say it's ten thousand dollars. Okay. Are you telling me that a homeowner is going to be able to get thirty percent back in the form of? a credit, a non-refundable credit, cash. I mean, because obviously this is huge. I mean, I, I would, I, if I didn't know anything about solar, I'd be, let's pay attention to this right now. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's a big deal. It's a, there's a get 30% tax credit. So that's $10,000 project that you got a $3,000 tax credit there. Um, and, uh, you know, that, that really moves the needle for economically. You know, uh, uh, it, it makes uh, solar uh, very attractive. And, you know, the cost of solar has dropped so much in the past Decade, You're killing my business. That, but I'm doing it. That, that, that's no, it's great for business. It's it's great for business. It's great for most importantly for uh, uh, residents and, and businesses uh, that are seeing just unbelievably uh, these these incredibly low prices for electricity coming off from solar projects. That ten years ago, I mean, everyone said this was going to happen, but it was hard to believe it. Um, and I'm still though. Yeah, 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 yeah. Kind of, yeah, I mean, right now the, the the reason you go solar if if you're if you're a homeowner or a business owner, you want to save money. You know, it's 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 nice to you know be doing something you know moving the ball forward uh, on on environmental issues and battling climate change. But at the end of the day, this is about saving money at this point. Um, it's not about saving money. That's what it, that's what right. That's <laughs> about saving money. In fact. Yeah, that's so. That's where we are in the the clean energy uh, marketplace for uh, you know homeowners and businesses. So, so how do we save money with solar? So step by step, I'm a homeowner. Yeah. Okay. Me, Adam JC. Okay, right now we're a condo owner. Okay. I buy a system. Let's use the same number, twenty thousand dollars. Thirty percent of twenty thousand dollars is six grand. Okay, so. What, what, what do I do? What happens? I, I go solar $20,000 and am I getting a check for $6,000? You're not getting a check. You're getting a tax credit. So it's, Got it. uh, um, you know, it's, it's a, uh, uh, it's an amount that it, you otherwise were going to be paying that amount in taxes. Mm. Uh, you get to, uh, not pay that much in tax. No. Oh. So that's, uh, that's nice. That's, that's, uh, that's real, real money. Um, and it's, you know, even more important for a business. Uh, it's, you know, gotta be worried about, um, uh, operational expenses and um, to the extent that businesses uh, uh, are going to go solar, it's because A, they want to pay less for their electricity and B, they have some use for this tax credit. And so this is actually something I want to get to. At least um, the, the tax credit, it's, you know, for, for a homeowner, it's, it's great. For a business owner, it used to be, it's great most of the time. So let's say your business doesn't have a tax liability 
uh, going forward, uh, sure. for whatever reason, maybe you're a new business and you're taking some losses or, uh, you just, uh, you don't you know, know much, right? Your business. Yeah. You don't. So a tax credit was useless for you. And, you know, it's like giving a fish a bicycle. Um, and, uh, I may have read that so <laughs> And, um, uh, and so, you know, the tax credit, you, you were just kind of, unless you were able to participate in the tax equity markets, um, you were kind of just, uh, out of luck, um, uh, if you wanted to go solar and one provision of the inflation reduction act, that's going to make a really big impact is that you're now allowed to, um, sell those tax credits to unrelated parties, uh, through, uh, what's called transferability. Okay. Uh, transferability. And uh, this is going to allow you to get, you know, uh, uh, something closer to, you know, whereas before your tax credit was either useless or you might have gotten, hey, 30 cents, 35 cents on the dollar through participation in tax equity markets. You're going to see that number go up a lot. Um, uh, you know, there's still going to be costs and won't get 100 cents on the dollar, but um, you're going to start seeing that go up a lot now that you can uh, sell your tax credit legally to unrelated parties. Um, so that's a really big deal in the inflation reduction. Act. What is an unrelated party? An unrelated party is, is a person walking down the street <laughs> as you can sell your tax credit to anybody who wants to buy it. Um, you know, this is a little wild, wild west, maybe presumably, yeah. well, presumably they, they have tax appetite. You know, they've got some taxes they want to, uh, 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 pick that they want to use it against. Fail themselves out. <laughs> Hey, we can be honest here, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, if they, if, uh, you know, it's, it's, if you want to buy a tax credit for a project that's, um, you know, providing environmental benefits, I don't see anything wrong with that. I don't see anything wrong with it either, and I'm saying it live. All okay. right. So back to that 30%, because honestly, it's engraved in my head. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't read anything. Let's just pretend I don't. But maybe along the lines of, I mean, I, I read as much as 60%, and maybe it goes 10% and 10% and 10%, and I think there's adders. And, and, and honestly, I, I want to apply this to the homeowner first. So does that mean anything? If not, tell me. So, um, you know, the, the, um, from a homeowner's perspective, it might be a little less relevant, but from a business owner's okay. perspective, um, because I'm speaking from a business owner's perspective right now, um, the Inflation Reduction Act has, you're correct, it's just added this, I think it looked like Candyland. It's just this mystical universe, really new, yeah. exciting yeah. new universe of potential, uh, with, as you referred to, bonus adders. So, um, you know, before uh, the, the before state was that uh, you used to have, you know, this thirty percent tax credit. I did again. I'm thinking if you're a small business. Yeah, let's just. Yeah, yeah. I'm in the shoes of a small business owner. Um, you, you've got this thirty percent tax credit, and every two, three years there was this cliffhanger in Congress of whether it would be extended or not. So there was no real reliability or predictability around whether this tax credit was going to exist in, in you know, 18 months in a lot of cases. And so it's hard to make business decisions uh, with that kind of environment. What the Inflation Reduction Act did is it created a predictable, stable policy environment where now the tax credits um, at 30% through uh, 2033 um, and again, I'm, I'm, I'm talking from the perspective of a small business owner, you know, there's some wrinkles if you're doing large scale projects in terms of, um, uh, requirements that the project has to hit, but for smaller projects, one megawatt and below, uh, you've got a, a 30% tax credit till 2033. That's the kind of liability and predictability that businesses create. And then on top of that, you've got these other opportunities to increase your tax credit. Um, so you're referring to bonus adders. Yeah, there's a, there's a domestic adder. There's exactly. a, an environmental community adder. There is a low income adder. I mean, this is this is starting to feel like a maze, but it sounds good. Yeah, I mean, and in theory, you know, there's a, the, in theory you can get up to seventy percent tax credit. Seventy. Seventy. Those projects will exist. I can imagine they'll be very few and far between. But uh, you know, more realistically, and and a lot of the you know, if you're a small business owner, you're you're more looking at you might be able to get a 40, 50 percent tax credit. Now, I say that like that's not a big deal. That's revolutionary. That's a huge. It's deal. insane. So you've got the predictability, this ten year runway of thirty percent that you know you're going to get. You've got the potential to get additional these bonus adders. And I'd like to take a minute, if it's all right with you, Adam, to just kind of dive into that. And yeah, let's dive deep. It. Yes. So um, uh, the first uh, the bo first bonus adder I'd like to talk about, cleanest by far, is what's called an energy communities bonus adder. Mm. 
this is an extra 10% uh, on your ITC um, if you're located, if your project is located in what's called an energy community. Right. Um, and in every community, the, the basic idea is that we want to drive investment, you know, policy rationale behind this. Congress wants to drive investment in areas that um, are traditionally have their economies dependent on fossil fuel extraction, production, and uh, processing. Um, so the, the, the most common use cases, think of like a, a, a community that has a coal mine that's closed down. Okay. Um, that area is an energy community automatically. So um, uh, the, the, any, any census tract that has a coal plant that's closed down in it um, or any adjoining uh, adjacent census tract, automatically gets that 10% bonus. I guess it's just an instant qualification. Instant qualification. And now with the coal mining shut down, maybe it creates jobs as well? I'm just kind of... It's a, Well, the idea is you're driving investment in there and, and you're able to you know try and it, it make solar a more attractive proposition and allow for more businesses to thrive like uh, uh, in, in uh, installing solar projects. Um, so the energy community, that's so it's 10% for if you're in a area that's been affected by a coal mine closing. It's also in areas that um, have a high percentage of their economic, their, their tax base, that is uh, uh, based off of fossil fuels um, uh, receipts. So um, if you've got, uh, you know, a, a classic example is, a, you know, a plant shuts down and it really hurts the local tax base. Um, you know, you've got uh, a lot of you lose jobs and it's, it, it's, it's, it's painful. Um, and so the energy communities that are targets these types of communities by saying that if you have a certain percentage of tax revenue drawn from um, uh, from fossil fuel uh, production, from fossil fuel refining, um, you know, the, the whole nine yards, um, then you're going to be able to uh, also get this 10 percent bonus adder for projects in your area. Um, and when when your uh, when your locality ha also has high unemployment, mm. so that's the idea behind energy communities. So you're probably saying, you know, okay, this is a bunch of uh, this is very uh, interesting but very confusing. Um, you know, there's a lot of things flying around. Well, they made it really simple for you. Um, um, there's a website called energycommunities.gov. 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 Perfect. Right. And if you visit uh, uh, Sunstone Credit's website, I. Um, and what, what is the, okay, what is the, yeah, sunstonecredit.com. Um, and you look at our uh, blog posts, we have uh, blog posts that we've been putting up that kind of track the guidance the IRS has been putting out on all of these provisions of the Inflation Reduction Act. Um, but uh, it, we have a link to energycommunities.gov on our website. Yeah. But you can go there yourself, type in your browser, and they just kind of map. It's that straightforward. There's a map, you type in your address, and it's either said as, hey, you're an energy community, or Nope, sorry, you're not. And so it's that if plug that level plug. of yeah, it's that level of uh, crisp uh, ease of access. And in the event that you are, uh, then uh, like you're you get that extra ten percent. All right, and then domestic adder. Domestic adder. I think yeah. that is like that is the talk of the town, at least in the solar market. For sure. Yeah. No, there's and it's uh, uh, you know the the guidance has come out. The final guidance hasn't been issued around the domestic adder just yet, but um, the initial guidance came out recently. Um, and when I say guidance, what I mean is that this is you know part of the 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 the, the process where Congress passes the bill, um, and then uh, the executive branch has to say, well, this is you know Congress has given us this this these guidelines to work under and these results to achieve. Here's how we're actually going to do it. You know the nitty gritty of how we're going to implement uh, this this grand vision that Congress has. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Pronounced display, uh, yeah, and then so like, and in in the case of the Inflation Reduction Act, a lot of that is going through the IRS, right. um, because that's where you know the tax benefits are driving a lot of the the safety. Yeah, 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 a little bit. Yeah, that is uh, <laughs> gives you the willies a little bit, but little bit. Um, you know the IRS is, can be a very important economic driver, and in this case, it's uh, because tax policy is incredibly important and is a big driver of business in in the United States. Um, so. Uh, but so on domestic content, to get back to the domestic content bonus adder, that's another 10% bonus adder. And the idea here is that we want to encourage, um, we want to encourage uh, uh, installers and customers to use American manufactured components in their solar uh, systems. Okay. Um, and 
that's pretty straightforward. So, you want to do that? Solar panels, inverters, vacuum systems, really anything, any component I have that any only procures. Yes, a hundred percent. And so the uh, you want to incentivize that to be made in America, and pretty straightforward. You know, there's uh, and companies have just jumped like frogs in the dynamite pond to to, to jump into the American manufacturing market, which was not a good place, uh, you know, before before the Inflation Reduction Act. And now suddenly you've got, you know, all these different uh, clean energy companies coming and building uh, uh, facilities in the United States so that they can qualify for this domestic uh, content bonus. Um, you they know, want it. Like, what do we need to do? Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. They don't, how do we, clearly there's going to be demand here. So let's figure out how we can make things in America again. And, um, and, uh, and that's been really... Hard to see. You know, you've got, uh, there's an example of the Q cells facility that's getting spun up in Georgia. Um, just got a ton of manufacturers that have moved their capacity over to the United States or are hiring Americans um, to produce these panels uh, domestically, which is encouraging and, and uh, it's what you want to see out of public policy. Um, but uh, at the for the time being, mm-hmm. there aren't that many things that are currently domestically manufactured. You've got, you've got uh, the idea is to uh, have Americans making components that are going to be, that, that have Americans having good paying jobs that are going to be resulting in uh, solar projects that are, um, uh, get this 10% bonus adder. And that's where you're starting to see, you know, right now in the, for the Q-Cells project, uh, uh, the manufacturing facility example, you know, you've got hundreds of, of folks at work um, in construction jobs building it right now. Um, so you've just got this enormous boom in construction of these new facilities, and then there are going to be these permanent jobs that come along with it. Um, that are uh, where these uh, these cells that are now going to be eligible for this ten percent credit are going to be produced in in America. And you like to see that? Amazing. So on my notepad, it actually is amazing, and I'm also thinking of really everyone from outside of the United States really just going. We got to get over there. We got to figure this out now. Yeah, how do we how do we pour capex into the United States so that we can take advantage of this? Uh, yeah. yeah, but so I'm up to I'm up to twenty percent right now. Okay, low income matter. Maybe I read a little bit. Maybe I did. I, I don't know. Well, very impressive. You're you're uh, I'm not a tax consultant. Your uh, your homework. Yeah, no, that's an important thing to notice. Neither of us are CPAs and or, or we're lawyers, so. I wouldn't construe any of this as explicit tax or uh, accounting uh, advice, but you know, generally speaking, um, the low income bonus adder. So that's an additional ten percent, possibly eight, maybe even up to twenty percent. Mm, we're gonna have to, yeah, this is gonna be a ten to twenty. Hey, all right. This is the this is the the the, the program that's uh, you know the most what it sounds like. You know, it is meant to drive investment in uh, under invested underserved areas, low income communities, and. Um, and so if uh, a project's located in a low-income community, um, the federal government is, uh, has a, um, a, uh, a, a program where you can apply. You can put your project into a queue, and um, they're going to be, they expect it to be oversubscribed, so they expect that there's going to have to be a lottery component to it. Um, so we're not there yet. Yeah, this, this well, it's, it's going to get there pretty quickly from what, uh, from what, I've, what I've seen, but... Um, and the low income bonus adder is, is not quite as cut and dried as energy communities. You know, and right. communities, you're, if you go to that website, website. you're on, on some credit.com. Uh, yeah. You can go and it got a link to the website, energy communities.gov. You go to that website, you type in your address, you're either in an energy community or not in, in an energy community or not. If you are, that's 10%. That's great. The low income bonus adder is a little bit more of a process because there's a certain, there's limited capacity that's been allotted for this program. Um, so they can't just say, hey, every project that happens in a low-income community gets this 10% bonus adder. Um, so you need to submit your project, and there's that a little bit of uncertainty around that. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, uh, 10% or even 20% in some cases, when you're talking about developments on rooftops of affordable housing, uh, uh, um, uh, huge affordable housing uh, developments, that, that's, that's, worth the, that's worth it. You know, that's going to be... A lot of people are going to jump at that, um, but it's uh, you know it's it's more of a it's not a guaranteed ten percent for the for the low income bonus there. Um, so yeah, you've got you've got a situation where you can get up to you know let's say yeah let's like let's yeah. say you've got a uh, a project on the rooftop of an affordable housing development 
in a low income area that's in an energy community, that's 70% ITC. That means 70% of your project comes back to you in the form of a tax credit. And so, you know, I love mom owners, okay? I, condo owners. <laughs> so if you're telling me if you're a commercial business owner, there's potential to literally get set potential to get 70% back. Absolutely. So in theory, say let's raise the cost of a project to what, what's the average cost of a, a commercial project? Average cost. Well, I can tell you so some, some credit and this is a, this is a good opportunity to talk about, um, uh, company I'm, that I, that I work for and, and yeah, man, I would love this. Um, so some, so credit, we do financing for what we describe as small to mid-sized commercial solar projects. Um, just to give you a sense of, of what we do, uh, our average loan size is, um, right around $350,000. So these are, these are small businesses. Um, these are, you know, the, it, this isn't for the Ikea's of the world. You know, they've got, they can finance things on balance sheet. They got no problem getting financing. Uh, you know, the big box stores. Um, this is for, uh, you know, uh, a, a cheese factory in California. This is for a church in, in you know, uh, uh, mm -hmm. in New England. This is this is for uh, a, a affordable housing development in D.C. You know, this, these are these are uh, the, the folks who, you know, don't have immediate ready access to um, uh, financing traditionally. So, you know, the mom and pop shops, the uh, uh, a cheese factory in California, a, uh, you know, church in New England. Um, uh, you, you've just got uh, uh, projects of uh, all kinds of diversity, but, you know, some uh, business that has one or two locations, you know, isn't, uh, you know, we're not talking about a McDonald's here, um, but small businesses, uh, you know, the, the heartbeat of America. That's what I'm with. Right. Um, and uh, they're, uh, you know, the sort of the state uh, before, I like to think before Sunstone arrived was, Hey, you've either got the cash to do the project yourself or good luck. Have, have fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, do, it do it yourself. Yeah, exactly. So and so Sunstone really stepped in to fill this void. Um, when I'm really proud to be part of the team that's doing this. You know, it's uh it's not only a really exciting business opportunity because there's you know, we're we're uh we're paving the way in a lot of ways. Um, but it's also filling an important gap of uh in the market. Um uh, and um, you know, in order to uh, meet the sort of uh, uh, targets that we need to meet uh, in terms of deploying clean energy. And, and uh, th this is a market that needs to be addressed. So I'm really proud of the work that our team is doing to uh, both, uh, you know, bring cost saving solar to small businesses, um, you know, making it uh, easier to operate your business um, because you're saving money in your solar bill. Uh, sorry, an electricity bill through solar. Yeah, no, I, I just keep hearing savings. I love it. And we're up to seven percent with Adders. So I'm, you know, Dude, this, again, that's the, very weird. The, the, the utility workers are literally outside picketing the, the studio right now. All right. I know you see them. You keep looking. So. Um, but yeah, it's uh, uh, so Sunstone. We serve this market. Uh, our average loan size is right around three hundred fifty thousand um, dollars. Back. Uh, you know, we're, we're, uh, uh, we're, we have a team of underwriters that do nothing but underwrite these small to mid-sized commercial solar loans. So they've seen That's their focus. every curveball, everything you could possibly imagine. They've, 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 they've seen it. Uh, they've, they've worn it. Um, Yankees to use them for that. Yeah. I think a lot of teams, a lot of teams, <laughs> excuse me, use our phones. We have, we do have some very athletic underwriters. Um, but, uh, um, but yeah, so this is just a really underserved market, and it's about you know how can we bring savings to small businesses um, through solar, uh, and um, uh, so I'm really proud to be part of the team at Sunstone. Um, but so you know we've been talking about this again. I'll call it the small and mid-sized commercial solar market. It so. doesn't sound. I mean, it just sounds. It, it's still not small to me. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not small by any stretch of the imagination. We're talking about a million, two million dollar projects here. That's 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 a lot of scratch for for you know small business owner. Um, but in the grand scheme of things, you know, we're we're stacked up against the utility scale, which is that you know that's that's what you think of when you think of solar. You think of just a, a, a field of a solar farm, you know, in the desert or something like that. We're talking about much more rooftops for businesses. Okay, so not not in the middle of nowhere. Uh, there's a couple of places in California. Yeah. Nothing against California, but literally you get lost sometimes, man. <laughs> like it's it's uh, gets interesting. It's not all LA. <laughs> it's so, so 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 far, all right. Mm -hmm. We have what I like to call the IRA because the Inflation Reduction Act. That's the last time I'm going to say that word. <laughs> 
That is, and if I could just jump in, Adam. Yeah, yeah, that is so. So people uh, just are are kind of sleeping on the impact of the Inflation Reduction Act because it's called the Inflation Reduction Act. It's just like, well, what is this? You know, uh, I'm sure this is something to do with the Fed or something like that. It's not. The Inflation Reduction Act is the the like I said, this is the largest investment, um, uh, the largest uh, uh, congressional or parliamentary investment in uh, clean energy in human history. Um, this is three hundred and sixty-nine billion dollars of, of investment in, uh, into uh, the clean energy economy in the United States, which is um, you know which was in uh, growing fast to start with, and this is just a uh, uh, in, incredible longer-term predictable package that's going to uh, change the face of, of energy in the United States, and it's such a big deal, and, and so few people know about it. It's it's pretty wild. Um, so hopefully. You know, this is why we're talking this about. This is why we're talking about. In all honesty, this is why we're talking about the. All right, I'm, I'm doing it. Inflation reduction. There we go. Okay. <laughs> which, which again, it, we're we're bringing low income adders. We're bringing domestic adders. We're bringing energy community adders, which all literally have the potential to bring that thirty percent up to seventy percent. Which is again, like I'm emphasizing that number. That is huge. <laughs> This is this is what I really want to get to. Okay, this is this is the heart of. Well, I, I think we need to we need to focus on this. Nonprofits, okay, you know I I, I may have read somewhere, maybe, uh, you you have used this phrase a lot. But at the end of the day, you know a tax write off for the nonprofit after after solar was 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 useless, or in your case, uh, as good as a, a fish riding a bicycle. Okay, and I think you said it earlier in the show. That's right. That's right. Giving a fish a bicycle. So you know, one, you're a nonprofit. Like, let's take a church for example. Mm -hmm. um, you could obviously use solar. All right. System projects. We've just talked the size of those. I mean, a small project could cost upwards between three hundred fifty thousand to one million, two million dollars. It's a small project. What? What's? How is a church going to come up with the cash to do that? Yeah, there's nothing small about that ticket size for for a church, especially. And I'm glad you brought up nonprofits. I mean, this this is what I think is going to be secretly one of the big engines of the Inflation Reduction Act. Is there's a provision? We're going to call it uh, elective pay. Um, okay. It's it's also been known as direct pay. So yeah, I think it, of it as cash, but we'll get to that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that is the way to think of it. Um, but I know you've got a lot of savvy listeners, so they've probably heard it in some form of direct pay before. It's now officially called elective pet. So I'm going to call it elective pet. Nice. what the IRS is calling it, and, and we have to listen to the IRS. Yes, um, yes sir, we do. Uh, it's now, um, but uh, elected pay is a game changer for this small to mid-sized commercial solar market. Um, like you said, you know, nonprofits previously had no real financial incentive to go solar. Um, if, if you're a church, you, you could, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, make the argument that you're safeguarding, uh, you know, uh, God's gift to, <laughs> to us, uh, um, you know, and I have to get from personal perspective, um, you know, this, for protecting the environment, found the battle of climate change is, is, is part of the mission, but at the same time, your mission, uh, isn't going to. Um, you know, uh, uh, pay the bills. Uh, it's not, yeah, it's not, and I mean, it, like, it, let's be honest. Yeah. you don't have the money. It's not gonna yeah. happen. And you're a nonprofit. You're, you're, you're. I, I, I've run a nonprofit in my time, and I've been involved a lot of them. You're just habitually scrapping and scrapping. You're, uh, it, it's, it's not yeah. a, you know, a. Uh, we're not talking about mega churches. Big right fat, now, right? uh, uh, <laughs> you know, balance sheet that we're talking about here. Um, uh, so. It, the financial incentive is really important from a nonprofit perspective. And previously, there was no um, tax credit. You're like, great, what do I do with that tax credit? I can't sell it to anybody. Uh, I can't use it myself. What am I going to do with that? Um, well, the Inflation Reduction Act changed that through this elective pay provision. Elective pay. So now what you can do if you're a nonprofit or a state, local, or tribal government, I should say. Okay. Um, what you can do is uh, you can now uh, receive... Uh, that what would be the amount you would receive in a tax credit in a check from the IRS. That sounds like cash. That is cash. That's that's like back to my okay. elective like pet, but that sounds like cash. That's cash. So walk me through that. Uh, let's use a million dollars for a solar system for a 
church. Absolutely. Yeah. So you got a billion dollar solar system on a church. You know, let's just let's say a hundred thousand to to be more accurate. If we're if we're, I mean, there there are million dollar projects of churches, but we see a lot more of like a hundred thousand dollar project on 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 a church. Um, and previously, uh, you know, the 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 church, their options were run a pledge drive or something like that, get a hundred thousand dollars, let's go solar. And a lot of and some churches did that, and more power to them. You know, that's that's fantastic. Um, but uh, uh, there certainly wasn't any financing available, um, and that's really hard to hit when you've got to offset 100% of the project cost. Now, with this $100,000 project, the same church um, uh, is going to be able to uh, install the project and then get a check for $30,000 from the IRS. Okay. Can't hit that. Um, it's a really big deal. It changes the project economic for whatever. Or whatever you want to do, yeah. Um, uh, so, you know, the the big challenge, uh, especially in a nonprofit uh, uh, environment, is that um, upfront capital, as I as I said, is, is difficult to come by often. So financing is really important, and so we work with a lot of churches to finance projects. Um, and uh, uh, and um, the this elective pay provision allows the churches allows the project economics to be really really great in a lot of places you're saving money from day one if you're using yeah, the, so so. the way the way that you're explaining this again i'm still using mystical unicorn is you're getting a check back and then honestly i would assume you'd go to the green bank for the remainder if possible uh, sure yeah if, you, if you're lucky enough to have a good green bank in your jurisdiction you can you can uh, uh go knock on their door and see what type of programs they're offering um, but yeah, this is, uh, 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 you know, generally speaking, I think Green Bank would send you uh, uh, the Sunstone credit in a lot of t cases because, um, you know, this is like we talked about earlier, this got to be a private sector driven uh, um, investment story. And that's what Sunstone credit is a part of. You know, we're, we're, we're making financing available to these sort of the smaller uh, uh, projects that previously did not have it available before. And uh, you're turning a lot of projects that wouldn't happen into projects that are happening because financing is now available through Sunstone Credit and uh, partner uh, Sunstone Credit partner installers like Green Brilliance. Um, and we just love our partnership with Green Brilliance. Uh, uh, so lucky to be working with you guys. You know, if there's one thing that I, that your listeners, I'm asking them to take away uh, in, in, in terms of what's going to drive change from the Inflation Reduction Act in this smaller commercial solar universe it's those bonus adders and that elective pet these are huge deals yeah uh, these, these are going to make projects um that were not uh, uh economically didn't make sense and you know really you know the lower the cost of electricity that you're competing with the harder it is to have a project make economic sense well these additions are going to allow for a lot of projects that didn't make economic sense before to suddenly pencil. And that's going to move a lot of business uh, for uh, American installers, green billions included. And it's going to move a lot of business for um, uh, companies that have opened up shop manufacturing products in the United States. Um, like the, the example I was talking about earlier with Q cells in, in, mm -hmm. in Georgia. Um, so that's, uh, uh, it's, it's at the end of the day, uh, uh, you know, it's a job story on the macro level. And then from a individual small business perspective, it's a, Hey, I'm paying less for electricity than I was previously story, which is, that's a great story. Sunsocredit.com. Go to we'll sunsocredit.com. Yeah, absolutely. No, go to sunsocredit.com. Um, we have a uh, media section where we have blog posts. Um, I've been altering some of those and will alongside my colleagues. Um, and if there's, you know, the, we, we really get into the nitty grit. So, uh, uh, to the extent that you're, you're having a difficult time falling asleep at night, I urge you to go to the media section and read some of our blog posts on the IRS guidance because that'll do it for you. Um, that being said, it is really important stuff. So, uh, it, it's worth, it's worth checking out. Um, you can also, uh, you know, you can also see the impacts of the inflation reduction act when you open up your uh, newspaper or, or click on, uh, uh, your morning website, you know, first website you go when you wake up and you see those ribbon cuttings happening. You see those, uh, those factories springing up to life in the United States. Um, and, uh, and you can see that impact and it's just, uh, it's a lot of people don't make that connection between, Hey, a ton of new investment just came into my congressional district or my, you know, nobody thinks like that. Nobody thinks my congressional district is ever a Congress person. 
a ton of new investment just came into uh, you know the uh, zip code right next to me, um, and uh, suddenly my neighbor got hired by the this uh, Q cells plant, um, and uh, this is having a positive ripple impact impact through my life. That's how you know making the connection between these real life impacts and the bill that was passed by Congress, the Inflation Reduction Act, is really important. Um, and I think uh, uh, is is uh, just glad to have an opportunity to chat with you about that. Alex, bless you, bless your family, bless your new son Connor, and you know, honestly, thank you for cre creating a sense of awareness. And there you have it, Alex Craigie, Director of Business Development for Sunstone Credit. Alex, your passion to the community and the way that you have described the Inflation Reduction Act, the importance of such litigation to homeowners business owners, and nonprofits is astonishing. Be blessed, my friend. Have a blessed, blessed day. Thank you. Thank you.